Hi everybody, Brad Poole here, and I'm going to read to you, how many ways can you eat a cat head biscuit? Do you know your biscuits? Is your knowledge of biscuits limited to those dough-filled cans found near the supermarket dairy case? Of course, the word biscuits can apply to a wide range of baked goods according to a person's particular mix of cultural, ethnic, economic, and geographic background. Many dictionaries will tell you that the word biscuit is from the Old English and meant twice-cooked bread. That which is a biscuit in England is a cracker in America. For purposes of this discussion, a biscuit is not a cracker. It does not come in a can, and it requires more preparation than something called brown and serve. The perfect biscuit can be described as a unit of bread, baked bread, whose dimensions after baking are roughly two and a half to three inches in diameter when round, or two and a half to three inches on a side when square. It has a thickness from about one to one and a half inches. The top is lightly browned while the bottom has a dark brown crust about one eighth inch thick. The center by contrast is fluffy white and soft to the touch. The overall texture of the bread is such that you can separate the top from the bottom using only your hands. This maneuver, as well as a straight-in finger poke, can be executed without fear of the dreaded sudden biscuit failure syndrome. Other lesser breads might be prone to breakage or crumbling. When you bite off a piece of a biscuit, you should experience a tearing, ripping sensation, much like the sound made by pulling bark from a tree trunk. Grandma Poole's actual biscuit recipe is printed in full below as dutifully recorded by daughter-in-law Thelma, who wisely solicited the recipe from Grandma one morning just as her actual biscuit-making process began. Thank you, Thelma. That batch of biscuits may have been a little off due to Grandma having to stop and verbalize each step as she went along. I don't, however, remember hearing any complaints from the consumers. And you never, ever did. Two parts of the process go beyond any list of ingredients and the result will not be grandma's famous cat head biscuits if they are ignored. The biscuits must be baked in iron, either a pan or skillet, and must be baked in a bath of oil or preferably bacon grease. It's very important. When the biscuits come out as big as a cat's head, you call them cat head biscuits. Now back to the original question. How many ways are there to eat a cat head biscuit? While there are surely countless others, we will cover only four here. Number one, the combination juggle and jaw toss. Usually this method entails eating a biscuit straight from the pan or skillet without benefit of any other food additive to enhance the experience. Etiquette demands the immediate consumption of the biscuit once it is removed from the skillet. If it is still extremely hot, the biscuit eater is likely to toss the biscuit from one hand to the other like a juggler in a cheap attempt to cool it. If he miscalculates his ability to withstand the pain and tries to bite quick of the hot object of his affection, you might be witness to a self-preserving, slightly humiliating jaw toss. This is where the biscuit eater no longer cares how it looks and is only interested in how it feels. Frantically, the eater tosses the hot bite from jaw to jaw with an assist from the tongue each time. All the while, the eater demonstrates the breathing exercises made popular in natural birthing classes. Eventually, he swallows the bite only to feel the pain move slowly toward his stomach. The eater uses all known modes of verbal and nonverbal communication available to him as he pleads for a ration of any nearby cold liquid. <laughs> Number two, the sugar in a biscuit method. This method is a favorite of young and old alike. A fresh but not too hot biscuit is selected. The eater subjects the biscuit to a deep digging poke of the finger. For the more genteel biscuit eaters, a fork may be substituted for the finger. Holding the biscuit in one hand in such a way as to cause the biscuit to hold open its mouth, 
The eater stokes the cavity with as much sugar as the cavity will hold. The eater then very meticulously pours cold evaporated milk into the cavity, allowing the sugar to soak it up as it is poured. The eater looms over the loaded biscuit and eats it from top down, being careful to keep the sides intact as he goes. Number three, the good old biscuits and gravy method. One of my favorites. As recipe below states, there are byproducts of the biscuit baking process that can be used to make fine gravy. The eater takes two cat head biscuits and opens them up on a large plate. They should cover the better part of the whole plate. Use three biscuits if they turn out to be kitty heads. A bath of milk gravy made from the leftover flour and oil grease is poured over the open face biscuits. The eater uses only a fork to cut up bite-sized morsels to thus be consumed one delicious forkful at a time. Number four, Hershey's Cocoa Biscuit Method. If as a kid you ever had biscuits this way, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The memory of the look, feel, smell, and taste stays with you always. I'm traveling right now to a place in time in my youth when I last remember making and eating my very own homemade Hershey biscuits. To make it, you began finding a large drinking glass. You then put three or four tablespoons of Hershey's cocoa in the glass. Each spoonful is heaped as high as the small opening on the cocoa can will allow. Now you add an equal amount of sugar. After you stir the cocoa and sugar together, you then adjust just enough pet milk to change the dry powder to a good thick liquid. Continue to stir as you pour. You will know the consistency is right when it will stream off the spoon just a wee bit slower than 10W40 motor oil. Now you are ready for the biscuit. For this eating method, a slightly thinner cat head biscuit is desirable. You should have before you one glass containing a fresh load of prepared cocoa, one cocoa stained tea tablespoon, and one flat cat head biscuit especially selected for the occasion. If the chosen biscuit is not flat enough, good results have reportedly been achieved with an application of the double palm press maneuver. Taking extreme care to guard your unfinished treasure from biscuit thieves that always seem to lurk about, you begin the final step of your preparation. You tear off chunks of biscuit and drop the chunks into the glass. You continue the step in the process until the whole biscuit is in the glass. You insert the spoon in the glass. Carefully and even artfully, you begin to slow stir and flip motion designed to paint ever morsel of biscuit with a goodly coat of the chocolate goo that rests at the bottom of the glass. Satisfied that a homogeneous concoction has been reached, you pause to sample your art. You stir some of the sample again. It don't get no better than this. You think as yourself, to yourself as you sit back and enjoy the whole cold glass of Hershey's Cocoa Cat Head Biscuit. Grandma Pool's Cat Head Crunchy Shelled Chewy Biscuits. Get a large heavy bowl and strong wooden mixing spoon. Spread out wax butcher paper on the counter, waxy side up. Sprinkle an ample coating of flour on the paper to knead the dough after it is made. In your bowl, put about three cups of self-rising flour. To add about one half teaspoon of baking soda and one quarter teaspoon of salt. Stir in buttermilk until the dough is thinner than most bread dough balls need to be. If you don't have buttermilk, you can use milk and add about two tablespoons of vinegar to react to the baking soda. After the ingredients in the bowl are well mixed, dump the sticky dough out onto the floured paper. 
Of course, you're going to want to put the bowl in the sink with a spoon and fill the full of water and a few drops of Dawn dishwashing detergent once you're done with all this. Now, sift more flour on the top of the pile of dough. Take off your rings and flour your hands. Flip flour onto the edges of the dough as you try to fold it in half on itself and then flatten it out. Repeat this folding operation, adding more sifted flour until the dough ceases to be so sticky. This much needed kneading causes the dough to be tougher. These biscuits will be chewy rather than flaky. Put a large cast iron skillet on the stove burner. Melt bacon fat in it. If you're more health conscious, you can use vegetable oil. I believe Maxine Poole switched to 100% vegetable oil to, toward the end of her life. I never knew that. I always thought it was bacon grease, but I was good with it either way because her, bacons, or her biscuits were the best. Okay, back to the story. You will need about one quarter of fat oil in the bottom of the skillet because there is no oil or shortening inside the bread. Pinch off lemon-sized lumps of the dough. Pat each lump of dough on its sticky side in flour, then place that torn side down in the palm of your left hand. With the right hand, roll the dough around in a circle, tuckle, tucking away any uneven edges under with your right thumb as you roll. When the top and sides look smooth, turn the biscuit smooth. Top side down into the grease, then turn it over and place it in the grease by the edge of the pan. Repeat rolling dough balls and coating both sides until you have the dough worked up. Cook in a 400 degree oven until medium brown all over, maybe about 20 minutes. Take the skillet out. Grease will still be bubbling between the biscuits. With a fork, turn the biscuits over so that the top can soak up the grease as they cool enough to eat. Or in lieu of this tedious process, you can slather butter on top. I like that method too. These biscuits are still good the next day. To revive them, cut them open and place the cut side down and crunchy brown side up on a cooking sheet. Broil for just a bit. The crispy, crunchy outer shell of the biscuit is back. I guess you could brown them in skillet with butter like one would with hamburger buns. You could try, try it in a toaster, but the inside of the biscuit gets toasted too rather than remaining soft. And this, ladies and gentlemen, concludes Mama Pool's Cathead Biscuits. Goodbye.